using python so before getting into the concept let us understand uh, the characteristics of the data set for which the decision tree can be applied the first is the data set should be a supervised data set in the sense that you should have an output column second is the output column should be categorical right not there are two types of outputs one is continuous another one is categorical for the decision tree to be implemented that id3 decision tree to be implemented the output column should be categorical but there are decision trees which you can use for uh, computing the continuous values also which we call it as cart but this tutorial is about the implementing id3 decision tree where you can take the output variable only to be of categorical nature third is actually decision tree is a non parametric model meaning that it won't add any extra information to the data set rather it will process the data set whatever data set if you give a very good data set you will get a proper output and if your variance is too high on your data set the results won't be much appreciable and hence are the characteristics of your decision tree so these are the list of packages we are going to use pandas for creating data frame numpy for numerical operations and for from the sklearn there is a package called tree under which we are have decision tree classifier for performing the decision tree fitting and uh, today i am going to show you the output of decision tree by means of the graphical format itself and hence we are importing export graphics library for visualization okay and then Uh, for uh, all these three or for drawing the uh, graph only you will see shortly towards the end of this tutorial and pi.plus is a package through which you can draw the graph okay so today we are going to use one data set called iris data set okay this is a very famous data set you can find the usage of this data set and the tutorial in lot many places this iris data set is available in musa repository i am going to use the url itself for downloading or creating a data frame so meaning that when you install it automatically uh, you should have the internet connection for it to get installed properly okay so now this uh, data set will be downloaded and it will be stored on data_url which we are going to read and with the names of the columns as sepal_l sepal length sepal width petal length petal width of the class and the class it belongs to okay now i am going to print the first five rows of the iris data set to understand whether we have downloaded properly or not so now this is the data set we have added four attribute headers and the class so which is going to act as an output this class column okay so it's uh, so in order to identify how many number of unique values are there so having class as the output column now we'll try to understand what are the different class labels that are available so this can be done by using iris_df which is the data frame which attribute i am we are going to use it is the class column the unique values are what we are going to print okay so what are the values iris setosa iris versicolor and iris which virginica okay so all the data types are supposed to be objects here strings are considered as objects and hence it is for us to process the results for a machine so we are in need of a numerical value rather than your string value and hence now we are going to apply a process called one hot encoding so this one hot encoding meaning means the mapping of every value to on one numerical value meaning that iris setosa can be replaced by 0 versicolor can be replaced by 1 and virginia can be replaced sir virginica can be replaced by 2 it's not necessary to be 0 1 2 it could be anything as you wish like 5 6 7 also is possible just a representation of the class that's it how to do so we are creating a dictionary over here classes of the dictionary name so this iris setosa it is given as the value 0 second is 1 third is 2 okay now 
in the iris df data set we are going to replace the class by means of the classes okay so what happens it will take the class attribute it will perform a mapping with this corresponding dictionary when wherever you find find iris set or so it will replace with zero and it goes in order for that to get uh, check split this data set into input attribute and output attribute how to do the attributes are uh, indexed with column 0 1 2 3 and 4 so and hence iris df dot i l o c index location all rows we are going to take and hence it is colon how many number of columns we need to take it is from index 0 to 3 and hence i have given 4 so the output column where lies the output column it is in index 4 right so and all the rows we are going to take and hence rows representation is colon column representation is by index 4 okay now just these are the uh, values that will be written and hence we are converting it into array so just if you print you can see how it gets printed okay so these are the values of x if i replace that by y you can see yeah okay and uh, we may want to print the shape iris underscore df dot shape of shape only sorry yeah it has 150 rows and five columns that is the length now coming to that's all i i am not uh, i am not splitting the data set into training or testing if you want you can split that's just we are going to uh, train the data set using decision tree classifier okay i have given different uh, type of decision tree classifier with the varying uh, parameters so these parameter let us discuss shortly so i'll just execute one by one you just check before that let us see the flow so first I will just, uh, okay. So now decision tree classifier, what is the criterion to be used? Entropy, meaning that uh, the actually the data sets will be divided and a tree is constructed with some particular attribute to be the root node. Okay, how to identify which of the attributes has to form the root node depends on different categories, right? So one concept is by calculating entropy of the system and one another is by Gini index. So now which of that you want to use has to be specified here. So today we are going to use entropy as the criterion and hence I have given. Just I am executing you can see the output of this. So class weight is shortly we will have a discussion on this. So but it states that the tree has been constructed. Okay. Now we are going to draw the tree graph whichever is constructed as a result of decision tree classifier actually this will be uh, that is it uh, this decision tree classifier will give you a dictionary as an output having the root node name colon all the values that are emerging out of that root node and it goes today we'll draw graphically for that and then we are going to store it in a variable called dot data okay and from this dot the from the data that is uh, available in dot data we are going to draw a graph using the function called export underscore graph -vis. okay so which is the tree so it is the name of the output is tree and hence it is given okay so and out file into which of the file you have to write it is in dot underscore data whether it needs to be filled yes okay filled in the sense you can see some colors and rounded yeah it is the shape of that okay special characters are you permitting inside yes okay so that is that if you draw an image you can see a beautiful decision tree okay as how you visualize normally it will get printed as such you can change the height and width okay for example 600 the height is set to 300 i am changing it to 3 and see this is the decision tree that has been constructed once the tree has been constructed now as usual we can predict the values using the predict function normally in linear or logistic regression we'll use fit here the classifier model is decision tree classifier that's it once this prediction is made 
we have to calculate the accuracy of the model okay how to calculate the accuracy here you have a categorical data so it's none other than the accuracy is what is required when your output actual output is yes when your uh, predicted output is yes then there is no loss right when your actual output is uh, um, when your actual output is no and your predicted output is yes we say there is error in the data okay so that is calculated using the accuracy score now when we execute we can see how much is the accuracy it is 1.0 meaning that the entire 150 samples have been predicted correctly okay we don't have any problem now we'll change we'll have a detailed look at the output of this decision tree you can see lot of parameters i'll just explain one by one class weight class weight represents to how much weightage are you trying to give for an attribute right that is defined by class weight and here if you haven't given all the four parameters will be taken given equal weight sometimes if you want to feel like the sepals has to be given more weightage rather than the patterns you can give it in class weight this criterion as we already discussed you can either have entropy or gini index based on which you are going to segregate the or select the root node okay maximum depth it is none which means the tree will get constructed and the iteration will go on until all the leaf nodes corresponds to a particular class sample when i set this to maximum depth what is the depth of this tree now 1 2 3 4 5 and 6 right so suppose if i change in the next uh, pattern i am giving the max depth to 4 initially it was 6 0 1 2 3 and 4 okay so it goes to four levels actually the splitting is four level leaf nodes we should not consider one two three four four levels of split how many root nodes will be constructed instead of will be given so now if you see uh, now we'll go for prediction and we'll calculate the accuracy you can see somewhat there is a reduction in accuracy okay why because we are not letting the tree to go and get constructed to reach its maximum efficiency we stopped till a particular point okay now coming to the next max features how many features you want to consider if you give none it will consider all the features if you give any particular range it will consider only that many number of features then maximum leaf nodes none okay maximum leaf nodes means for a particular leaf how many maximum number of leaf nodes you are permitting a decision tree to have okay so here if you see this is a leaf node this this so it has somewhere around two four six seven and then eight leaf nodes okay how many are you going to give that was given by max leaf nodes minimum impurity decrease minimum impurity split so that is max uh, very particularly meant for gini index and then min underscore samples underscore leaf how many number of minimum number of samples you are going to have a permit for a tree to get splitted for example uh, we'll run the next uh, tree model okay here minimum number of samples of in a particular leaf is set to 50 okay so you should have samples to get segregated so now if you see this particular class period node has 46 samples okay so if we run this let's check whether you can see i'll reduce the width and height and uh, division of tree stops at the splitting of tree stops at this point because we need a minimum of 50 samples to get segregated okay which is not there in any of the cases okay then what is the next one you have minimum sample split okay how many number of samples you want for a tree to get whether the tree has to be pre-sorted whether we are going to fetch the randomness inside the segregation or not okay how do you want the splitter to be whether it is on best criterion that is we are heavy as already have seen now uh, the information gain will be the result of all the attributes that will be uh, there available on the data set among that whichever is having the best information gain will be considered as the root node okay that is given by this parameter splitter 
So all these are different kinds of uh, hyperparameters that are available for decision tree. So let us take a minute to understand what a hyperparameter is. Right. So there are two words. One is model parameter, another one is hyperparameter. Model parameters are those that are there uh, that are required for the algorithm to train the system and to test it. Hyperparameters are those parameters that are required to tune the fine tune the model that is constructed and to optimize the results. Okay, so it is not that with these kind of uh, parameters alone the model is being built. Okay. So, these are the parameters that are helpful in some means or other to bring down a better metric or to reach a better metric. And first, if you uh, try to draw this uh, graph, is, actually it won't be uh, drawn, you will be thrown with an error. For this, for the kind of graphs to be drawn, you need to install pi dot plus. Okay? I just have given uh, a small video link in my youtube channel slash subanya you can just watch it if you want help on installing that particular package okay so in anaconda if you want to install you have to use conda install in python if you have added all other packages you have to install pip install you have to use pip install okay so once having installed this PyDot Plus library, you can get to have these kind of graphs, which is uh, very useful for better visualization.